Hi, welcome to question one of the 2023 paper two for the maths leaving cert ordinary level. And if you want to copy these notes, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So first question here is on core to geometry and we're given two points, um, A, which is four in the X, two in the Y and B, one in the X, eight on the Y. And we're told they are two points in the coordinate plane. There might be no harm sketching them, Okay, um, and it actually to work out the slope of the line AB. Now, I have an answer done out, although I just to point out, I threw in the formula in the notes here, just to give a, a heads up that it's in the maths tables. And here's the way I would present it, but I've done a, an actual graph of it. That's point B, one in the X, eight in the Y, and this is point A. And we're trying to find the slope between those points, or a measure of how Y changes as X increases. So X increases by three units for the six units that Y increases. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you could use rise over run, which is effectively what the, the, the slope formula is. The difference in the Ys divided by the difference in the Xs. So it'll be six over three. Now it's a negative difference. Six is decreasing, okay? Um, or the Y is decreasing. And that's going to be negative two is the answer. Now, if you're using the slow formula, I would suggest you write out the coordinates, label them, write out the formula, and then substitute them in. If there's negative numbers, I'd always suggest substituting them in brackets. Then you can use the calculator to evaluate this and go straight to the answer of negative two. Now, the next question then is on the distance between AB. And again, I put the formula in. This is the distance formula. And I think on the next page, I have the answer here. So um, there's the two points again written out and I've labeled them. I've written out the formula, okay? And no, I have an extra brackets here for some reason. I don't know why that's there. Um, then I substitute the values in, okay? So the X2 there is one. The X1 I said was four, okay? Now again, if there were negative numbers, I'd substitute them in the brackets so the calculator will understand the functionality. Then the y2 there is 8, take away the y1 value, which is 2. Now that can go straight in the calculator, and I come out with a figure of 3, three times the square root of 5. Okay, and that's the answer. Now, 3 times the square root of 5 is a number. You could convert to a decimal, and then you'd have to round it, because I believe it's irrational, and then um, you might get a rounding penalty if you hadn't displayed this answer and just done it in the calculator. So always leave your answer in the form presented in the calculator, unless asked for a different fashion. You could add the word units there, but there's no units given the question, so it's not that big a deal, but we should, if there's a distance or something, we should always have a unit. Now then it says, find the equation of the line through the point minus two seven with a slope of minus, uh, sorry, of one third, and then leave your answer in this specific form, which really just means they want everything on one side, but they want A, a being positive. Now, um, so my point there is minus two, seven. Now that's uh, an X and a Y, okay? And then you have my slope, which we often call M, is a third. And the next page, I'll have it done out prettier. There's my slope formula, there's my point, there's it labeled, and there's the slope. So this is a straightforward enough um, methodology that we should know. You can practice it, it's, it's very similar each time. And once you realize that this is the formula, don't make the error of substituting for this y or this x. They remain in the answer. You're substituting for the y1, you're substituting for the m, and you're substituting for the x1. And note that I put the negative number in in brackets. Now, the calculator can't handle this because there's a y and an x, but we can do it by hand. And I suppose the classic way here would be to multiply the three this direction and the, the top part this direction. Um, it's just a faster way of getting around, having to multiply everything by a third. Um, so the three multiplies this way. So three by Y is three Y. Three by minus seven is minus 21. And then the one multiplies this way. One by X is X. One by, no, minus by minus had changed to a positive. But one by two is two. Now we want everything on one side. Okay, so we're going to move the Y and the X. We're going to get rid of them. And I've done that here by taking away 3y, okay? 3y minus 3y is going to cancel. On the far side, if I took 3y away on the left, I have to take 3y away on the right. 
Now, I've also taken away the, the or added minus or plus 21. Minus 21 plus 21 would be zero. And again, I'm wrong unless I do the same thing to the other side. And once I've done all that, okay, I end up in a situation where there's nothing left on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I end up with x um, minus 3y, and then 21 plus 2 is 23. So x minus y plus 23. So it's in the format that they wanted. Okay, and that's that. Now, the next part then um, is we're asked to, the point four two is shown on the coordinate diagram below. Bit of two, actually, just, just this is a screen grabbed page. There's another diagram on the next page. Draw a line se segment through the point four two with a slope of two on the coordinate diagram below with the range minus two as far as six. Okay, so that's the point four two. Now, if it has a slope of two, it means it goes up two units for every one it goes across. So if it goes across up two and across one, my next point is here, okay? Now they ask for a line segment, so it'll have a start and an end. Um, the next point will be up here. Okay, and I don't need to go any further because that's beyond the range of y equals six. Okay, so this is y equals six. And then y equals minus two, you're talking about all the way down to here. Oh, Okay, apologies for this. Um, so on the next page here, we'll see the answer. Okay, again, I just use the concept of slope is the same thing as rise over run. So for it to have a slope of two, it must be going up twice for every one it's going across. And that's the pattern that's happening. And slope, and the way I prefer to say it is the rate of change. If something's changing, which in science we're often measuring change, we want to be able to have a way of identifying how fast or slow. Is it a positive change, a negative change, so we can understand that change on a more fundamental level. Now the next one here is saying the same thing. Okay, it has a slope of 4, 2 is the same point. Now this is a slope of negative 2 over 3, so negative 2 over 3. That's the rise over run. Now the negative means it's going down, so it's going down 2 for every three it goes across. So if that's the starting point, it's going down two across three. You'd have a point here. Um, you could argue it's gone across three up to, this would be the next point. Um, and then, minus one as far as seven. Okay, you'd have another point, actually off the graph. Okay, so that's the line there. Now, I'm not, I can't draw with a ruler, but that's the one there. So it's going down two for every three it's going across. Or going, across three up two if you're looking at it from that other perspective um and that's that now that's the end of question one so if you want to copy these notes send me an email at shane at gmail.com like and subscribe to get access to more playlists see you on question two